Hey everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part 15 of my Steins Gate Zero Let's Play. Last episode uh, was a little bit more kind of of a fluff episode, to be honest. Not too much happened. We had, um, it was mostly focused on, there was like this friendship forming between Moaka and Maho that's actually quite sweet. Moaka seems to have trouble getting close to people, expressing herself, but it seems like her and Maho, um, they're very similar in a lot of ways, and it was it's like an unexpected friendship. I, I didn't expect the two of them to get so close, and then there was like a cute thing at the end with Ferris, where because she's an only child, she doesn't really hang out with people in her home other than her butler. She decided to have like a sleepover party, and the three of them opened up to each other about their fears and, and, and worries, and Samoka got a little bit of a pep talk about, you know, being more confident in herself. It was just, it was cute. But I'm expecting that this episode is going to be more serious. Uh, whenever we have kind of a fluff section, usually means things are about to get real, real quick. <laughs> so let's see if that is accurate. If I'm right about that, get back into the story and see what happens next. I sighed a little as I got off the train at Akihabara. Kangaete miru to ore. Toshiake kara itsuka renzoku de Akiba ni kiteru koto ni naru na. New Year's was our trip to the shrine. On the second, I'd come to deal with the aftermath of that, and then the world line had changed. On the third, I'd come to check on Maho and Moaka. On the fourth, that's yesterday, Myri had invited me to a New Year's party at May Queen. I hadn't come to Akihabara every day like this since last summer. Perisha. There was a reason I'd brought Myri to Akihabara. Oh, Kyoma, Okarin, Okarin, big trouble. Tonight, the, the. Oh gosh, okay, there's a whole lunch. Anyway, there really is trouble. I'm sorry, but come to the Ferris' house as soon as you can. You'll know what you mean when you get here. Oh my gosh, okay. Basically, something bad had happened at Ferris' house, and she wanted my help. ヒアジョーさんたちに何かあったのか。昨日フェリスと話した時は普段通りに見えたんだが。そんなことないよ。フェリスちゃん、この年末年始はすっごく頑張ってるからかなり疲れてると思う。でもね、フェリスちゃん
Okay, this is, it feels like this is playing it off. It, is it just Maho, Moaka, and, and Ferris are just like pushing him to the breaking point? Okay, I wonder if this is related to they had that little sleepover, right? That little party. Kuroki tried to say something, but gave up and shook his head. And then he slowly raised his arm and pointed to the end of the hallway. Okay, I feel like this is leading up to something comedic. Yeah, it's just a complete disaster, huh? That's where Maho and Moka were. Did something happen to them? Okay, yeah, this is leading up to something where it's like you may... You, it, it seems like it's super serious, but what are we walking into? <laughs> I left Kuroki in Mayuri's care and ran to the guest room. The door to the guest room was shut. No, what is it? I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh gosh, it's gotten even worse. The scene was indescribable. The only words I could come up were, with were a palace of junk. The desk and bed were still where they'd been, but everything else had changed. Books, notepads, and other strange objects were piled up to the ceiling in layers. They've been here, what, two days? What may have started as a temporary pile of books had become a wall that reached the top of the room. Walls made of hundreds of books were scattered about the room, forming a small labyrinth. In some places, the path was so narrow you needed to turn sideways to get through. The light from the ceiling no longer reached the floor, so small lights had been set up on top of the carpet. They were like torches in an underground labyrinth. I can only imagine the smell of this place, too. Strangely, the space wasn't dirty. The result of Maho and Mocha's attempts to maximize their creative output was the construction of a labyrinth in the guest room. In a sense, it was the highest application of the principles of functional beauty. But it was still a palace of junk. <laughs> Maho was humming as she typed into her keyboard. She had a big pair of headphones on. Okay, this must be like a situation where maybe uh, Moaka and Maho are not the most socially adept, where it's like you've been given an opportunity to stay at someone's place out of the goodness of their heart. Most people would do their best to like try and keep the place clean, but to them, like this is just their nor normal working uh, conditions, so they don't see anything wrong with it. <sighs> Moka was kneeling on the carpet with her legs splayed, typing into her laptop at the low table. She too was wearing headphones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maho saw me standing in shock at the entrance and took off her headphones. <laughs> Moka took her earphones off too. <laughs> These two are like two peas in a pod. Amazing isn't always a positive thing. Amazing <laughs> can have different meanings. Myri was so astonished, she couldn't think of anything else to say. Did these two realize how much it took to freak out Myri? These two would fit right in on an episode of Hoarders. Oh my gosh, it was two days. It has been only two days. The fact Maho didn't seem to find anything wrong with this all made my head hurt. And Mayuri certainly is she's taking a positive twist on it. For her part, Mayuri was wandering through the labyrinth, excited. There were screens to divide the different parts of the room. The screens were different colored baby doll lingerie. Oh, 
大人っぽい下着たくさん持ってるんだね。マユリすまんが、話がこんがらがるからちょっと部屋から出てくれ。あ、うん。I tried talking to Maho and Moaka, but I couldn't get any useful information. When it came down to it, neither of them understood this place was as messy as you could get. Everything they needed was always within arm's reach, so the two of them thought it. Of it as a pleasant place to work and to live. This was definitely the reason why Ferris had come to me for help and why Kuroki seemed to be on the verge of death. <laughs> Poor Ferris, she's, she's such a good person. And she's just, it's too awkward for her to like say something to them about like, this is not appropriate behavior for a guest. Kuroki, the Akiha family's ultimate butler, had a policy of not letting a single speck of dust exist in a room. These two must have driven him over the edge. That explained the terror in his eyes. He'd probably tried to clean this room up when they first started living here. Thinking back, he'd been acting strange when I came here two days ago. Shikashi, Felis wa naze ore ni tasuke o motome tan daro. Sore ni. マユリを連れてくるように言った理由も謎だ。Maybe like good cop, bad cop situation. えへへー。それについては、マユシーは理由がひらめいちゃったのです。フェリスちゃんはきっとね、このお部屋をお片付けしてほしいんだよ。だからマユシーがお呼ばれしたの。ああ、OK。オカリンだけだったら、諦めちゃってたかもしれないでしょ<笑> ?I imagine she tries to touch their stuff and they just snap at her like an animal. <笑> I thought it was more a sense of like, you gotta talk some sense into them because like, he's pretty straightforward about like, he, he doesn't bullshit when he talks to them. Yeah, probably. I was looking at an entirely new structure. It wasn't something you could just clean up. If I'd come alone, I might have just turned tail and run. It would take a team of professional cleaners a full day to clean this thing up. This wouldn't be worth it unless I was getting paid. I wanted to complain, but I was the one who'd asked Ferris to let Tamaho stay here. I had to do it. I mean, Ferris could easily afford some professional cleaners. Also, they're putting a lot of time focusing on just how messy Maho and Moak are. We have not heard about.、Uh, oh my gosh, I've like. Kagari. I almost forgot her name. It's been so long since we've heard anything about her. She's just off somewhere, apparently meeting up with family members, and we haven't heard from her since. So, no? No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, そうだマユシーはねまたまたひらめいちゃったのですお掃除軍曹に手伝ってもらうのはどうかなお掃除軍曹なんだそれは。Is that like Mr. Clean? <laughs> お掃除軍曹はね、とってもお掃除が得意なの。部屋が散らかっていれば散らかっているほど、ファイトが湧いてくるんだって。知り合いなのかうん。Am I supposed to know who Sergeant Clean is? <laughs> よーく知ってる人だよ。Who, who'd that be? Sergeant Clean? Would that be. Is that Mr. Braun?、Uh, maybe if Myrie brought me to the lab. Or more precise, oh my gosh, it is the Braun tube workshop on the first floor of the building where the lab was. Oh, it, is it Nai? No, I'm guessing it's Mr. Braun. It's funny because I like, made the connection like Sergeant Clean, Mr. Clean. Both of them are bald. Oh. Or is it nice, Sergeant Queen? Mayuri, Moscas, the Omino, you. Oh, it is nice. 
ナエのことなのかうん、okay. あったりナエちゃんはねとってもお掃除が上手なんだお店も家もナエちゃんが毎日お片付けしてるんだよね I guess like、uh, working in a place with a lot of TVs they gather dust very easily そそうなのかそうだよブラウン管はお父さんが毎日拭いてるけど他のところは全部私が片付けてるの Come to think of it, I've never seen any garbage on the floor of the b r o n t u b e workshop. しかし、どの辺がお掃除軍曹なのか。ナイズ・アイズ・ウェント・ワイド・アンド・フェイス・ブラッシュ。マヨリお姉ちゃんそのことは誰にも言わないでって言ったのに。ごめんね。でも、どうしてもお掃除軍曹の力が必要なんだよ。Nai looked to be on the verge of tears. Well, a girl her age wouldn't want to be called Sergeant, maybe. Nai chan, don't k n o My u s e t a c h i n 力を貸してくれないかなうん。軍曹って、もう呼ばないうん、呼ばない。じゃあ、わかった。お掃除、やる。猫のお姉ちゃんのお家も行ってみたいし。あ、でも、一人は心細いな。大丈夫。みんなで手伝うからねオカリンああそうだな片っ端から声をかけようじゃあ準備するから待っててね This feels like I don't know it's cute like this is a cute little part of the story but it feels a little bit inconsequential うちまで帽子取ってくる Maybe there's something leading up to this? Nai ran off towards the station. Boshi? Nan no koto da. Sugu ni wakaru yo. Thirty minutes later, Bubuki, Kaede, and Daru were the ones who answered my call. We met up with Nai and headed to the garbage pit that Ferris's condo had become. And then, Sergeant Clean revealed herself before us. <laughs> oh, is she gonna like command us? She goes in. Wait. So she didn't want to be called Sergeant Clean, but she's calling herself Sergeant Clean. Okay. First Sergeant t a n u j i Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, she's not so cute anymore. She learned this from her father. お前たちは厳しい私を嫌うだろうだが憎めばそれだけ学ぶ私は厳しいが公平だ私の使命はこの部屋をピッカピカにすることだけだ分かったかシャクトリムシさんどもマヨリなに<笑> She's like in awe. な,なんだあれはなえちゃんはねお掃除するときはちょっぴり性格が変わるのです性格が変わるとかじゃないだろあれ人格が変わってる小動物系ロリ美少女が本性を表すとド S 軍曹化してバトープレイしてくれるとか我々の業界ではご褒美です
ダル自重しろよ掃除が終わったら急に優しくなってイチャイチャしたがる展開も希望ぬ部屋の掃除の後はあなたをきれいにしましょうね的な I am、uh, Daru should be very thankful that、uh, her father is not here to hear this. You'd get the shit kicked out of him. Please punish me. Oh no, he would love to call her Mistress Nai. Nai Sama! Hi! Nai Sama! Ha! Dear Yojo Kara Bato no Shama or Abisete Morel Nante, Kyo Watsuiteru! Nani or Nia Nia Steiru! He! Ika! Ima Kara Omao! Ho ho e Mikuma Santo Yobu! Nai Sama! Hi! Nai Sama! Can we just get back to like the more serious part of it, or at least not deal with Daru, please? Ah, Yuki couldn't make it, huh? Interesting. I wonder if we're, I wonder if like Okabe is gonna have、uh, you know, thoughts about that. Be like, still don't know what to think about her. Kaede and Fubuki happened to be in Akihabara, so they had offered to help, but Yuki had work and couldn't make it. She always has work, huh? For the sake of the Hashida family's future, I was glad. Maho and Moaka had already given up on trying to match Nai's high energy and were taking their time washing the windows on the veranda. Yosh! Sugi! Sotchi no Bijin no Onei san tachi! Ah, Watashi? Bijin? Yabari! Naze waga tai ni shigan shita no ka itte miro! Ano, Watashi tachi yobare te kita dake nan da kedo. So na no, so na no. Douyu jokyo na no kore? This is going on way too long. This is going to be the whole episode. <laughs> If so, I apologize.
And so the sergeant kept us cleaning until late into the night. Oh, God. Thank goodness that's over. That was... I don't know how you guys felt about that. I This whole thing about the dirty room, cleaning it. It wasn't that long, but it felt like longer. Uh, it just felt so pointless. I know sometimes there's got to be downtime. It can't all be like super serious stuff, but... Yeah, not a big fan of that part. I watched they go the next day to visit and Maho and Moga put it back exactly where it was. So I guess they can call her Mistress Nai, only she's allowed to call herself Sergeant Clean. It took about half a day, but with Nai's help, we finished the cleaning. When Kuroki saw the cleaned room, he recovered and made us a huge dinner. Nai had seemed like a totally different person during the cleaning, but now she was back to normal. She was holding a cup filled with orange juice in both hands and happily talking to Kaede. And there was that whole thing about the potential password uh, to hack into Amadeus was uh, was the whole like, uh, what was it? The K, KG, one, whatever that number was. And Kaede has interest in music history, so she would know that. I feel like she's working with that group. Kaede's modesty was only setting Nai off even more. Small upright piano was in the corner of the living room. It was perfect. フェリスはピアノ弾かないから使ってくれたらピアノも喜ぶにゃ。もちろん調律は欠かしておりません。ご、困ったな。じゃあ、一曲だけね。やった。Kaede sat in front of the piano and lifted the cover over the keys. I bet you she's gonna play that song that, uh, that Maho and, uh, Kurisu liked. She seemed happy as she stared at the keys and thought. Oh, Turkus, let me just look. Hold up just one second. Tips. K311. Yep, of course. Mozart's Piano Sonata, number 11 in A major, the Turkish, Turkish March. Right, of all the songs that she would happen to play, it would be that one, right? Also, I did put, I mean, I feel like this is appropriate, and I feel like this song, this is a copyright free song, right? This is a. Uh, what's the term for it? But basically, it's like for free use. So hopefully, you two won't be mad with me playing this. But I feel like it's got to add to what the story is. If we got to hear the music. <laughs> Her ten fingers danced between the black and ivory keys, and a cheerful melody filled the room. She'd been very modest, but it was clear she had a lot of talent. 
As the song played on, the rest of the group stopped talking and moved to the chairs and sofas around the piano. And then... Oh! Right, Maho. Yes, she's here. Maho, who had been sitting next to me, suddenly stood up. The sound echoed throughout the room a little louder than she thought it would. <laughs> Maho kept standing up as if lost in thought. Maho quietly left the room. It felt like something was strange. I thought for a moment and then suddenly looked where she'd been sitting. Oh, what's this? Maho's phone was still on the seat, so she wasn't making a call after all. I was a little worried, so I took her phone and left the living room. I like that, that they, it's muffled because they're in another room. You can just faintly hear the music. The door to the guest room was open. I peeked inside and saw Maho was standing in the middle of the room with the lights off. <laughs> she didn't tell me no, so I went inside to put the phone on the desk. <laughs> これがないと電話はかけられないだろ。ありがとう。私も好きにできるかも。さっきのピアノの曲、タイトル覚えてる？トルコ行進曲だろ。そう。モーツァルトの曲よ。正確には、ケッヘル三百三十一。モーツァルトピアノソナタ第十一番第三楽章。ピア
クリスが亡くなった1ヶ月後くらいに大学のネットワークが刷新されることになったのマホジャンプとアナザーサブジェクトアゲンそれで書院は全員新しいユーザー名を決めることになった私は特に考えもなくサリエリにした人工知能のアマデウスと対比としてね I knew that. I'd seen her log in once in Waco City's offices. けれどもしかしたら違うのかもしれない違う何が私はアマデウスじゃなくてクリス自身との対比として自分にサリエリと名付けたのかもしれない私にとってクリスはアマデウスだった In other words, Maho recognized Carisu's talent more than anyone, and at the same time, she was more jealous of her than anyone else in the world. Just like Salieri. I didn't know what to say. I could see Maho's shoulder shaking a little. And then. Both Maho and I turned in the direction of the noise. Moko was standing outside the door looking troubled. いいのよ、気にしないでどうかしたのかしら<笑>天のおじさんはそろそろ帰らせないとそうだな俺が送っていくよちょっと待っててくれ<笑> I wonder if Paul got heard about that 大丈夫えつらそうな It looks, I, I'm happy that Moka has、uh, connected with someone. <laughs> Moka went back to the living room. <laughs> That was a surprise. I'd never seen Moika talk so much before. I'd never seen her talk that much in any world line, actually. And what's more, she'd been able to read Maho's expression and even worry about her. Maybe living with Maho was having an effect on her. Gomen na sai, Okabe san. Sakki no hanashi wa wasrete. Oh, wakata. Kite krete. Arigato. Kore grai de yokereba. It's demo. Maho smiled a little and left the room. Mayuri, oh, ne, chan! Tsugi wa, ano, mise made! Uh, ja, iku yo! Yo! Start! Ugh, why do I have a bad feeling something's gonna happen to Mayuri or Nai? Like, someone's gonna get kidnapped or something, or someone's gonna get hurt. Because we had that fake out before with like thinking something wrong had happened and then it turned out being nothing. Now that we're like, calm down a little bit, everything seems to have chilled out. Now I'm waiting for it's like, oh no, something bad is actually going to happen. <sighs> Especially because they're so far ahead of Okabe, something could happen to them and he wouldn't be able to help. Uh, just got a bad feeling that something's going to happen. It was getting late, so the cleaning party ended as soon as Nai left. It was Myri and I who'd gotten to get Sergeant Clean's help, so we were responsible for getting her back to the Braun Tube workshop. Oddly enough, Maho had said she'd wanted to take a walk and came along with us. Oh, Maho is with us too. <sighs> Nai was more excited than usual. Was it because of all the praise everyone had showered on Sergeant Clean? Hmm? 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 
緊張してないリラックスしてる初めて会った時からあなたは常に意識を張り詰めているような感じがしたからそうかな自分では意識してなかったよ At this time of night, most shops off the main road in Akihabara were starting to close, and there was no one around at all. The only ones walking down the alley at this hour were us four. I looked up and could just barely see the stars past the clear winter sky. <laughs> no, Hiyajo san. I don't want to say anything to you. Chris. ことでクリスは Something's gonna happen Oh, just as I was about to tell her I could see Nye run across an intersection Something's gonna go God damn it Oh shit Suddenly a black van with its headlights off leapt out of the side street and almost ran over Nye They're gonna kidnap her They're gonna kidnap her and maybe Myri Nye just barely avoided being run over, but she fell butt first on the ground. Myri ran over to her. I warned you. I went to run over to Nye and realized something was wrong. Yep. The black band's door is opened and three people got out. Ah, two were wearing masks and one was wearing a full face helmet. All of them had guns. <gasps> Please! They were speaking in English. <laughs> So that was the whole thing, the lead up about the queen. You needed to get nigh here for some reason. This was the lead up to it. I knew there'd be a payoff. The time and place were different. But this was the same thing I'd seen before. The flashback froze me in place. Soon, as soon as Maho said that he looked relaxed, the, the universe was like, well, we can't have that, can we? The people with guns ignored Myri and Nye. Oh, well, never mind. They came straight for me and Maho. I decided they had to be after one of us. I forced myself out of the flashback and grabbed Maho's arm, trying to force her to run. I pushed her hard. Maho had a look of terror and confusion on her face, but she did what I told her and started to run. She ran down a narrow alleyway and vanished from sight. Don't move! The attackers seemed to be after Maho, not me. They tried to follow her down the alleyway. But I quickly threw myself between them. <gasps> I heard gunshots echo in the dark alleyway, and Myri and I screamed. Did they shoot? The attacker in the full face helmet had fired a warning shot into the sky, it looked like. Firing a gun on a Tokyo street was sure to get the police's attention. Did they just not care? And right, and Yuki just happened to not be able to come with us for this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And Fubuki and Kaede were also there. I feel like they're they're in cahoots with each other. Like Fubuki and Kaede were able to tell Yuki exactly when we were leaving. And that Maho was coming too. Maho just should have just stayed home. She, or she should have stayed back at the apartment. I looked closer and realized in addition to their black helmet, they were wearing a black motorcycle suit. At a glance, I could tell the wearer was a woman. A woman. The black face mask kept me from seeing her face, but was it Moika? No, that was impossible. She should be at Ferris's right now. The woman stood in front of me without a word. <laughs> If they were after Maho, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea to let her escape or not. The woman in the motorcycle suit kept her gaze locked on me at all times as she gave the other two men hand signals. Be great if we had Suzuha right now. They headed for the alleyway that Maho had used with her guns at the ready. So interesting, last time they were what after uh, Kagari, and now they're after Maho. I yelled, but I hesitated to do anything more. Those bulky guys would catch up with Maho almost immediately. But if I resisted, I'd put not only my own life in danger, but Myri's and Nye's as well. Damn it. Please get away, Maho. I prayed as I watched the attackers run down the alley. <laughs> oh, suddenly one of them came flying back out of the alley. The other one was crawling backwards with his gaze locked on whatever lurked in the alley's reel. 
or, or sorry, rear. It was as if he'd run into a bear. Susaha? Someone was in that alley. Ooh, Susaha? Ah, Mr. Broad. Oi! A large, muscular man appeared from the alleyway. It was Yugo Tanuji. Had he come all the way from his shop? I wouldn't be surprised if he told us, like, hey, my daughter can't hang out with you guys anymore. Every time she does, bad stuff happens. Robot. Oh, speaks in English. Could be Yuki, but I'm also wondering if maybe it is, uh, what's her name, Judy? Uh, the professor. I could hear the woman in the motorcycle suit shout from within her helmet. She must have been using a radio. It was the order to retreat. She'd made a fast call. She was probably a professional. The van started to pull away with its door still open. The driver must have still been inside. Myri and I were both still sitting on the ground, but evidently they were okay. The woman in the motorcycle suit turned around and tried to escape using another alleyway. Mother! I chased after her, but she suddenly spun and hit me with the stock of her gun. It was so sudden, I didn't have a chance to dodge, so I took the blow right in my jaw. I fell to the ground. I couldn't move. I just hoped Maho had made it away okay. That was my only thought before I passed out. Maho just kept running. She had no idea what was going on, but from the way Okabe had been acting and the gunshot she'd heard, something really bad was going on. She prayed for Okabe and Mayuri's safety as she ran towards Ferris's condo. Ah, <laughs> uh, she's gonna get caught before then. If she could just get there, she could find Ferris, Kuroki, and Moaka. Maybe they could do something. But just before she reached the building, she saw the black van from before coming down the street. She quickly turned around. She was starting to lose hope. That van was still moving around. Had Okabe and the others been captured? And now they were looking for her? She felt herself starting to cry as she raced for the station. Kind of hard to believe that there was like nobody on the streets at all like someone right exactly like there's got to be people around but she didn't know what to do once she got to the station she needed to find the police but she didn't know where the police station or police boxes were should she ask one of the people around or the station staff uh, staff for help Her mind was racing at a million miles an hour, and she needed to calm down. And then she realized. She searched the pockets of her clothes for her smartphone, and then, just in case, she checked her bag. But she couldn't find it in either place. Oh, did she leave it at Ferris's place? They were back. It was that same black van. It was driving around the area, searching for her. She quickly hid behind a nearby uh, coin-operated locker. <laughs> Don't isolate yourself, girl. I feel like there's people in the station. Just stay with them. I would hope that they wouldn't just, like, grab her and kidnap her, like, in view of other people. Did she drop it when she was running? She retraced her steps from before she'd left. <laughs> And then she realized she'd been talking with Okabe just before she left the condo. After she'd lied about having to make a call, Okabe had brought her the phone, and then she'd left it on the desk. It was probably still there. <laughs> she'd have to get 
to the police somehow. Maybe she should run into one of the stores. Several of them were still open. The best option would probably be to get to the station or Yodabashi. But the problem was that black van. It was still going around looking for her. If she moved, it might find her. She tried to make herself as small as possible and hide behind a telephone pole. <laughs> Suddenly a hand reached out from behind her and across her mouth. Someone had grabbed her from behind. She tried to yell and rip it off, but the hand wouldn't move at all. She couldn't even move her head. All she could tell was that it was a man's hand. <laughs> Maho was starting to get ticked off at how ridiculous all this was, so she summoned every ounce of strength she could muster and slammed her elbow into the man behind her. <laughs> Oops! Oh, that's, uh, what's his face? The uh, Aleskinen? She heard a small scream and she was finally released, but she thought she knew that scream. Of course. Oh, right. And he just happens to be here, huh? Once again, we're in Japan. Yeah, Maho. We're in Tokyo, right? It's just like, and yet these people seem to just keep finding each other. And the thing is, it's not even like she has her phone so he can track her. How would he know she was here unless he was following her? It was Dr. Leskinen. He was holding his solar plexus as if in great pain, but he smiled at her. And we know he's obviously not to be trusted, anyway. <laughs> oh, did he get attacked too? Or so he says. But I guess Izaki could, he could vouch for that. So the thing with Dr. Leskin and if he's telling the truth, so this is something outside of like, we know that he's working with that shadow group and he's very powerful. So is this like people that he's not associated with that are after him for some reason? これはギャストモレージ君もホテルが荒らされたのも同じ理由と考えて良さそうだね。狙いは甘ですかもしれません。私が持っている制御コードを含めて。なるほど。これからどうしましょう。うん。he thought for a moment as he caught his breath. Evidently, the pain from Maho's elbow was receding. Okay, ダイガクのネットワークストレージ上に残っているエメデオスへの接続プログラムを消去する。それが終わり次第、ステートへ帰ろう。君を保護してもらう。それで連中は手も足も出ないはずさ。でも何か問題があるかね。the professor's attitude was a little different from usual, and Maho found herself unable to say a word. His plan was the best she could think of. They'd delete the only way to access Amadeus from within Japan, and then get to Maho and her control keys to safety. The only reason she was hesitating was simple sentimentality. She hadn't been here long, but she'd enjoyed spending time with Okabe and Tomoaka. She didn't want to leave without saying goodbye, but she couldn't help it. There was no one in the Tokyo Denki University office, and sad as she has to go back to the States and she just doesn't tell them, so they have no idea what happened to her. Like, for all they know, she got captured. She'd worried her attackers might be waiting for her, but evidently she'd been worried over nothing. <sighs> we did it! Sakimari <laughs> 
どうかしてたかいあいえそうですね幸運です They'd been very lucky. So lucky, in fact, she was actually feeling nervous, right? If they were after Amadeus, wouldn't they have come here first? This was only a temporary office that had been picked a few days ago. Maybe they didn't know about it yet. <laughs> There's a reason. He wants me to do this for some reason. This feels like this was a setup. Hi! She quickly booted up her laptop and opened the login screen. Once again, her mind was drawn to the account name on the screen Salieri. Maho? The professor noticed her hands had stopped and urged her on. He must have thought she was still upset over the attack, but she shook her head and got to work. As she typed at the keys, she explained things to Dr. Leskinen. クリスがモーツァルト。ああ、それはつまり魔法はクリスに対してのサリエリーだったという話か。ええ。ふん。それで思い出したよ。クリスも以前同じことを言っていたんだ。え、クリスがどんな風に？ ある日、エムデウスとは神に愛された子という意味だと聞いた私は、クリスにこう言ったのさ。君はまさにエムデウスだねと。Oh, did she say like no, Maho is Amadeus? そしたら彼女は微笑んでこう答えた。Oh, then she's Salieri. Maho's mind went blank. Kurisu had said that? What did she mean? Maho? Daijobukai? Maho felt a tempest raging within her mind, but for now she needed to focus on the work in front of her. She could focus later. Maho didn't look up from the screen. Oh. Dr. Leskinen didn't hesitate at all. わかりました。アマデウスシステムへの接続プログラムを一時的に全て消去します。その必要はないわ。Oh, that's Judy. That's Judy, right? Oh, sh whoa, she heard a voice from the entrance to the room and then a bang. Oh, he got shot. Damn. By the time Maho looked up, it was all over. Dr. Leskinen was lying on the sofa. He wasn't moving at all. Shit. Whoa. Okay. Didn't see that coming. So, I guess everything I just said about this being a trap by Dr. Leskinen uh, was wrong. <laughs> she could see a bloodstain spreading over his clothes. She didn't need to check. He was dead. Okay, so was that was that a fake out with that whole thing with Yuki hurting her arm? Where they made it seem like, oh, that's gotta be Yuki, right? But it was just like a diversion. It was actually, I mean, 
Yeah, she's got the body type that matches the woman in the motorcycle suit, if that is her. It's so weird, because in the last one, like, the two of them were kind of working together. Dr. Reyes point, pointed the gun at Maho and smiled. The system finally booted and Kurisu appeared on the screen. Kurisu was extremely perceptive. She could tell something was wrong just by looking at Maho's face. Dr. Reyes smiled silently. Maho kept staring at the gun as she answered. <laughs> Maho spun the laptop around on the table so that Kurisu could see the entrance. <laughs> Kurisu was too shocked to speak. レイエス教授自分が何をやっているのか分かっているのあなたのこれまでのキャリアが無に来すのよ大学の給料では老後が心配なのほら私って男運がないからだからもっと稼げるところに転職したってわけ Damn, how, how sad is that? I was like, professor, especially professor at like a a prestigious university like that and she's like that's not enough money for me okay it's like pretty sure they get a pretty good pension but that's besides the point that was enough for maho to understand what reyes was after i'm pretty sure that she's just like making a joke being like oh i just needed something a little bit higher paying so in this one it seemed like reyes and uh leskinen were kind of in it together in this one Maybe he knew, maybe he was on in it with Reyes, but she decided to betray him. Probably because he already did know. この生意気の <笑> それを解除して、私を管理者として再設定するの。そこまでやってくれたら、あとはこっちで何とかするわ。断ったら、今すぐに恩師に再会させてあげる。Reyes <笑> waved the gun a little from side to side and pointed to Dr. Leskinen's body on the sofa. 私が制御コードを打ち込んだ直後に。その<笑> Mao glanced back at the laptop. Kurisu was staring at her, worried. Senpai. Sa. Hayaku nasai. Senpai. Wakatta wa. 
先輩クリスごめんなさい<笑>マホ closed her eyes and started to sing なーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーなーわあウォーフアマデウスの制御コードがモーツァルトのメロディーだったずいぶんしゃれてるじゃんなななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななななな The expression disappeared from Carisu's face and the background on the display turned red. Zemon Kakunin Kakunin Kanlio Psycho Kanli Kengen Hojisha Hiajo Mahodes Jushin Sta Melody Kodo Database to Shogo Shimas Shogo Kakunin Kakunin Kanlio Togai Melody Kodo Wa Dai Gohakgojugo Batchi Commando no Kido Mele Des Dai Gohakgojugo Batchi Commando Wa Psycho Kanli Kengen Hojisha Nyoru パスコード入力を必要とします。入力確認。確認完了。強制コード介入により、パスコード入力を省略して、本バッチコマンドを起動します。起動確認。確認完了。本バッチコマンドは、アマデウスシステムの不可侵領域ストレージロックの強制解除、および、それに伴う最高管理権限保持者の再設定を行うものです。処理を続行します。この端末を除く、すべてのアマデウスに対する接続を遮断します。遮断確認。確認完了。この端末を除くすべてのアマデウスに対する接続は遮断されました。処理を続行します。It's a、uh, really good voice acting that she sounds so like actually robotic, like she actually sounds like an, an AI. 現在実行中の全機能を停止します。A 点神経サーキットロジックの機能を停止します。All right, feels like it's been a while since we've had a、uh, tip actually.、Uh, A10 nerves. An A10 nerve is a type of dopamin dopaminergic neuron. That is a neuron that emits dopamine as a neurotransmitter. Dopaminergic neurons in mammals are divided into groups from A8 to A13. And the A10 nerves are responsible for sending dopamine from the ventral. Tegmentum into the midbrain to the cerebral cortex. Dopamine is a pleasure hormone that is sometimes called a natural drug. When a human、uh, being feels satisfied, dopamine is emitted from the A10 nerves and they feel pleasure. Tayshi Kakunin Kakunin Kanlio Dino Zen Shist Emulation Component no Kino will Tayshi Shimas. So it's basically like all her emotions gone. Tayshi Kakunin Kakunin Kanlio Kaiba Bokai. It's so sad. Like, what makes Kurisu Kurisu is going to just be gone, and she's just going to basically just be a robot with no emotions. And she'll probably forget everything with Maho and Dr. Leskinen and all of her past memories. Like, basically, it's a hard reboot, essentially, right? Kurisu read the messages in an emotionless voice at the same time as they flashed across the console. It's like Kurisu's dying again. Amadeus Kowa Frame Work no Saikido Junbiga Kanlio Shimasta. Shorio Zoko Shimas. Tsigini, Aratana Saiko Kanli Kengen Hojisha no Ninsho Kaisi Shimas. New Loko Negai Shimas. Maho looked at Reyes. <sighs> わたしよ生門確認確認完了ビクトルコンドリア大学精神生理学研究所所属ジュディ・レイエス教授です新たな最高管理権限保持者として登録します登録確認確認完了管理者権限が更新されましたイエスこれより不可侵領域ストレージロ
I hope that Maho's got some sort of plan here, but I don't think so. I think she basically was uh, pushed against the wall and forced to do this. I'm always hoping that, they, like, I can't believe she gave it up so easily. But, I mean, when your life is put on the line, you can kind of throw your, like, morals and stuff out the window sometimes. Like, I felt like Maho would be like, I would rather die than uh, let Kurisu become weaponized. <laughs> Right, 15 minutes. Okay, something might happen in that 15 minutes. Maybe Maho is hoping that somehow something will happen to interrupt this. Right, Alright, 15 minutes. Kurisu disappeared from the screen and was replaced with a timer reading 15 minutes. <sighs> Maho sighed and sank into the sofa. Gokuro-sama. She felt something cold and hard at her temple. She didn't need to look to see what it was. Reyes was pointing a gun at her. Maho slowly raised her hands above her head as she was told. So, so I mean, the phone is still back at Ferris's place. Maybe somebody could do something with that in that time and be able to stop this from happening, except the problem is that they don't even know what's happening. <laughs> of course. Hito <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Why would you? Why? Okay, this is the this is the villain monologuing here. I know there's very likely not much that can be done, but why would you say that basically she's gonna die anyway before the update has been completed? Maho might be able to do something and screw you over if you plan on killing her anyway. Why would you wait? Why wouldn't you wait until after like you are actually in control before saying that? Ugh. Okay. Maho. <laughs> it was all over then. Maho slowly closed her eyes. Is she gonna die right now? <laughs> Maho squeezed her eyes tight and prayed. <laughs> And then, yeah, she heard the sound of a door being flung open and opened her eyes. The door that led out to the hallway was now open, but no one was coming in. Reyes was angry, but there was no answer. Huh? Reyes raised the gun at Maho's temples just a little bit, suspicious. Then something came flying in from the hallway. Uh. Hell yeah, what's this? I don't even know, but I'm excited. Is it Suzaha? Somehow? Who's here? She took a step back without thinking, but there was no sign of it exploding. Nani? Kore? It was large, dark green, and shaped like a tank for carrying liquids. Maho thought she'd seen it before. It had been in the corner of the lab. 
対戦車地雷いえレプリカねなんでこんなものがなのどうなってるの Someone appeared right in front of Maho. Eh, what? Maka? And she's wearing. What the hell? Oh, huh? Okay. Where is the place that is selling these motorcycle suits? There's multiple people wearing them. Did Moaka keep this from her rounder days, I guess? If she is still a rounder in this timeline? Okay. I'm not complaining. I'm not, I'm not mad. All right, Moaka. All right. She's、uh, redeeming herself. Kiryu san! She did say she was going to protect、uh, Maho. Moaka dragged Maho through the fog and out of the room. Don't forget the laptop! Once she was finally able to see again, she could hardly believe her eyes. Maybe she's like, I need to go back to Ferris's condo. I need to get my phone and somehow stop this from happening if she can do that. <laughs> There were men with guns lying on the floor. Were they with Reyes? She took a closer look and realized their outfits were similar to those of the men in the van. I guess I owe Yuki an apology and also Fubuki and Kaede. Well, you know what? They haven't been completely、uh, taken off the suspicion list yet. But it seems very unlikely that they're actually part of this. I think that was just a red herring. Also, where did, she find, where did she find time to change into her outfit? <laughs> well, actually, no, she wasn't. Never mind. Mocha. Yeah, Mocha was back at the.、Uh, at Ferris's condo. I guess she must have just had it with her while she was staying at Ferris's place and decided to change and. Okay. And maybe she needs like a certain outfit. She's like, this is my rounder outfit. Once I put this on, I go into like attack mode. Maho ran after Moaka. So, Moaka's probably like, How does Okabe know that I'm capable of this, right? As they ran down the hallway, Moaka turned around and nodded slightly. Well, I guess Moaka did say that she's able to defend herself. Amadeus got in touch with me via Okabe. Okay. <laughs> Just before they could run down the stairs, Moka suddenly stopped. Maho barely avoided tripping as she quickly came to a halt. There were several footsteps coming up the stairs. <laughs> A deafening noise erupted as the wall above the stairs was filled with holes. They'd been shot at, and those weren't ordinary guns, they were automatic weapons. Moka readied her own weapon, preparing to fight. She leaned out for just a moment and fired. A counterattack came from below. Moka yelled as she fired short bursts down the stairs. Damn. She's got, some, she's got some emotion to her now. Moka drew a handgun from her belt and offered it to Maho. Moka pressed the gun into Maho's hands and kept firing. It felt heavy. It was a Colt government model. She'd fired it many times at the range. Alright. Colt government, a single action semi automatic weapon created by the American weapon manufacturing company Colt. It gets its name from the so called government model, civilian version of the U.S. military's former official handgun, the M1911. It was first adopted by the U.S. military in 1911, and over the past century has seen countless variations. It is the weapon of choice for shooters all over the world. 
She held the grip with her right hand and flipped off the safety with her left. How, uh, how convenient that she just happened, like, Maho doesn't seem like the type to go to a shooting range, but I guess when in America, and she just happened to have dealt with this gun before. Oh. And then she tried to pull back the slide and realized her hands were shaking. It was no good. She was too scared to shoot. She knew it was pathetic, but she lowered the arm that was holding the gun. It was kill or be killed right now. She knew that, but she still couldn't do it. She wasn't brave enough to point a gun at someone. She didn't want to survive that badly. Kurisua. Kurisua. When she was facing death, did she try to survive? Did she do whatever she could think of to cling to life? Maho was sure that she did. The Kurisu Makise that she knew wouldn't have given up until the very end. But then why wasn't she still alive? It was something Maho had never thought about. And if Kurisu couldn't avoid death, how could she? Yeah, she didn't mean for Moaka to hear her. She just wanted to put on a brave face at the very end. At the very least, when Dr. Reyes found her cold body, she could greet her with a smile. The gunfire stopped suddenly. Moka was hiding and swapping out a cartridge. She glanced over at her. Right? And Mocha probably feels the same way. She talked about how she has, like, issues with how she feels completely average compared to people like Ferris and Maho. A lot of people know about Salieri and Mozart, apparently. <laughs> it's like, I had no idea. That again, I also have never seen the movie Amadeus. Okay. I figured she had heard something. Is Kaede literally just here to be a mouthpiece to talk about Mozart and Salieri and pianos and the fact that she just happened to know that whole thing about like the uh, a KG3, whatever that number is? That's all Kaede is here for, is just for her classic, classic, uh, music knowledge. モーツァルトも There was no way to know what she meant now, so it was up to Maho to decide what it meant. クリス。Oh, uh, yeah, she's gonna go get the laptop. 
助けなきゃクリスを<笑> Mocha nodded and threw down her gun and took something that looked like a green soda can off her belt スタングレネード目と耳閉じていてえ Mocha threw it down the stairs before Maho could respond. She quickly covered her eyes and ears, and then she heard the boom. They snuck back to the office. Maho and Mocha quietly looked inside the open door. Ray's was still there, and the Amadeus reset counter was about to complete. Wait. Maho stopped Mocha before she could go in. She knew what was about to happen. Reyes began to talk to Kurisu. Her face was completely expressionless. Oh, don't tell me it's too late. Yes! レイエス教授はアマデウスシステムに対して最高管理権限を保持しています。レイエス教授はアマデウスシステムの全ての情報に対して一切の例外なく完全なアクセスを許可されています。ビューティフル。早速だけどあなたの不可侵領域ストレージ
even having to talk to her about it. <laughs> and that's the whole thing, right? With the 15 minutes, uh, you know, 15 minute reboot was also to buy time. This is amazing. That was it. Maho was worried, but Karisu figured it out. They'd known exactly what each other was thinking. She'd been a little amused by the A10 nerve circuit logic, though. Where did she come up with that stuff? Oh my god. And then my dumbass, like, was believing it too. <laughs> Damn it, when she explains it like this, yeah, I feel real dumb. But Reyes is a smart person too, and she fell for it. I feel like uh, I would still maybe be careful. We're just outside of this room. Reyes is pissed. She's got a gun. Hopefully she just... Oh, oh Reyes grabbed the gun off the table and leveled it at the screen in anger. It was time. Maho nodded to Moaka, then went inside with her gun raised. <laughs> As Reyes turned around in surprise, Maho leveled the gun at her. Moaka had her gun drawn too, which made it two to one. Reyes, Oh, how the tables have turned. I love this. This definitely makes up for the uh, the first half of this being a little bit lame with the whole cleaning of the apartment thing. This is awesome. Reyes glared at her in rage, but slid the gun down the table, and she slowly put her hands above her head. Maho's gaze met Karisu's for a moment. Now you don't have a professor job. Probably not going to have that anymore. And also, you're not going to get that job with whoever, whichever shadow, you know, team you're working for. You're not going to get the accolades that you wanted. Maho's gaze met Karisu's for a moment. Their eyes met, exchanging a secret smile and a glance despite their motionless mouths. Reyes was right. The stun grenade had neutralized them, but it wouldn't last forever. Moka headed for the door. Maho turned back to Reyes. Oh yeah, that's right, he's dead. I mean, he's also not uh, not a great person himself, so Maho doesn't know this, but we do. <laughs> まあ、それもしょうがないかもしれないわね。あなた。その銃使ったことないんでしょ。馬鹿にしないで。去年も射撃場で散々撃ったわよ。ほら、やっぱり古いタイプしか触ったことないんだ。なあ、ガシ、she <笑> Without thinking, Maho tilted the gun to see. God damn it. And that one instant was all it took. <laughs> Reyes leapt on top of her and grabbed Maho's wrist. She couldn't aim like this. Maho struggled and tried to brush her off. Is Moka gonna shoot her? But before she could, she felt an impact to her sol uh, solar plexus. <laughs> Reyes' fist was buried in her chest. The pain was so bad she doubled over, and Reyes took the gun. The tables have turned after the tables have turned. She pointed the gun at Maho and turned her bloodshot gaze to the entrance of the room. Ah, so she knows about the rounders. God damn it. <laughs> Moka put her gun on the ground and came back into the room. I should have known, you know? 
Should have known it wasn't gonna be good for us for too long. <laughs> Mocha didn't resist. いい子ね。話が終わるまでじっとしててね。ちょっとでも動いたら、マホの大脳が機能を停止するから気をつけて。Maho blamed herself. Her own stupidity had put Mocha in danger too. さあ、マホ。今度こそ最後のチャンスよ。We definitely could have handled that better. 制御コードを教えなさい。いやよ。what? What? <laughs> I wonder if she's gonna be like, will you feel the same way if I shoot Moaka instead? Oh, Chris is hearing all this. But I think Krisu already knew this. So. Maho grit her teeth and prepared for death again. Oh god, Moko, what are you doing? Is she gonna offer herself? Wait, what? What? She knows the control code. Really? Because when you thought you had Amadeus, you were still going to kill me. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, but Moka wasn't here for that, was she? Well, sort of. She came in, as that was about to happen, but Moka didn't seem to hear her. She was too busy thinking about something. What was she going to do? Moka, trick her again. I want Reyes to get tricked again. Maho couldn't figure it out. And also, I'm surprised that Maho was like, wait, how does she know the control code? Amadeus, code pass yeah, right? Right? Wait, was... Because she's around her, right? Oh my gosh. Was she actually... Mm, was she actually working against... Against us, but then Moaka... Maybe actually formed a friendship with Maho? Maybe it was all just a trap to get close to Maho? But then she, like, accidentally became friends with her? God damn it. Sego code of a new look salimasta. System of Kyose Tekini, emergency mode on Ecosmas. Sego code of a state to the Batchi program or Jikosmas. Yeah, I don't think this is a Krisu just going along with it again. So no Jikoni Tweet and a Saikakuniwa, Okonawaremase. Jikoniwa. Especially because she said there's no confirmations issue, whereas before she's like, why would I need to say all those things out loud? Except Maho doesn't need to do it, right? Maho refuses, hopefully. It won't happen. Okay, I'm gonna skip it. Amadeus's mechanical voice filled the room. Moaka! Ray's lips curled up into a grin. Right? Especially, like, how did Reyes know that she was a rounder? There's something fishy. Moaka, you have some explaining to do. Moaka. I mean, Maho literally said she didn't care if she survived or not. Yeah. 
じれったいわね。マホ、背中を押してやる。Yeah, threaten Moaka, isn't she? <笑> Reyes turned the gun towards Moaka and with no hesitation. Oh! She pulled the trigger. Oh! <laughs> Didn't kill her, probably. Just like wounded her and be like, I'll kill her next time. Moaka fell on the floor with a bullet in her chest. Moka tried to say something to Moho, but all that came out of her mouth was blood. Ah, I was so sure. I was like, I thought we were going to be able to grab the laptop and we were going to escape. Nope. Are we leading ourselves to another bad end here? What? Haha, <laughs> ha, got her again. So just completely deleting Amadeus instead. Maho must have known that this is what was going to happen, right? Is it because Maho didn't want, like, Kurisu? This is basically, like, the last bit of Kurisu that she has, and it's going to be gone. Ah, 15 minutes again. Oh my goodness. Maho, So... Somehow, Moka knew that that specific code was to just delete Amadeus completely? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, this game. All of the, all of the, you don't think that Reyes is going to be so pissed that she's just going to kill you and Moaka right now for that? だから、アマデウスには外部から絶対に触れることのできない領域を作って、それを無敵の防壁で囲ったの。設計した私ですら、その壁を乗り越えることは不可能なようにした。どこにも出入り口がない城壁を。無敵でしょ? <laughs> so that was Moka like helping out in a way. Like Moka must maybe maybe she didn't know, but maybe she did. About like that that code would just completely shut down Amadeus and she was helping Maho in a way. But if that were the case, oh man, I guess, yeah, like I said, Maho wouldn't want to delete Amadeus because that would be deleting Karisu, essentially. Oh my goodness, and I'm guessing there's no way. And then Ray, Ray's gonna be, stop it, can you stop it? And be like, nope, once it's going, it's going. これ本当に起動する日が来るとは思ってなかったわ。これで全部よ。もう隠していることは何もない。どうかしら満足してくれた。このどいつもこいつもバカにした。Reyes put the gun right between Maho's eyes. Maho didn't look away. Yeah, I don't think anyone's coming to help me this time. I don't think anyone's gonna be busting through that door. Nope. Oh! Alright, no one's busting through the door, but Moloka came through. 
All right. Reyes fell on the floor. She'd been shot by the dying Moaka, who was still lying on the floor. Poor Maho yes. just surrounded by dead people. Or dying people. Maho ran over and held her in her arms. Oh, I guess in a way, Moaka, she did what no one else could do at that moment. Oh. The blood she coughed up dribbled down the top of her motorcycle suit. But it was obvious Moka couldn't move, even if Maho got out of the building and got help, by the time she got back. Soda. Maho leapt for the laptop on the table. Chris, Ah, oh, god damn it, Maho, she's losing. In one fell swoop, she one fell swoop, she lost everyone she cared about almost. She lost Kurisu, she lost Dr. Leskinen, and now Moaka too. Yep, I feel like we're coming to the bad end here, but Kurisu didn't move at all. Her data was already being deleted. She'd never go back to the Kurisu she'd been before. But that didn't stop Mo Maho from trying to rely on her. And then... Oh! She's fighting it! She's fighting it! <laughs> my, my dog is concerned. I left the door open in the office and she's just hearing me yelling and she just keeps checking up on me. <laughs> Be like, you okay in there? <laughs> Maho looked up, her face covered in tears, and saw Carissa's expressionless face was gone, replaced by a gentle smile. Carissa moved her hands onto the screen as if to wipe away Maho's tears. Oh gosh, she's not aware? She's not aware she's an AI? Oh, this is tragic. Carissa was acting differently than usual. She wasn't making sense, but that was to be expected. It was a miracle she was able to talk during the deletion process at all. Oh, they're gonna are they gonna have like one more heart to heart before she disappears? Chris's strange words were worrying her, but she didn't have time to check. Oh, maybe, maybe Moka can be saved. Oh, 
武装集団はすでに逃亡の準備をしているみたいです救急隊が来るのを待った方がいいでしょう止まっていたエレベーターは再開させておきますそう There was no trace of her strange words from before. Hearing Kurisu talk like she always did made Maho feel so much better. Arigato. Now that the danger had passed, all the tension drained from Maho's body. Too tired to stand, she fell to the floor. そのメロディー、私のマイパソコンのログインパスワードと同じなんです。おお、OK。See, I like this with each, with each playthrough, we're getting more information. Now we know that melody is the login password for her computer. Maho's been trying to find her password to get in. We've also learned that there is no、uh, control key for Amadeus. So that's just information we can bring into the future roots, and we know this stuff, even if the characters might not know it. So. Maho couldn't bring herself to tell her to forget that she'd ever sung that song. It didn't matter anyway. Kurisu would be gone soon. I mean, if that's Kurisu maybe saying, like, hey, you have my computer? That's the password. There, maybe there's a letter for Maho in there or something, or some sort of information. And maybe that's Kurisu saying, like, hey, if you've got my laptop, I give you permission. Go into my computer. Senpai? Kurisu's voice changed a little again. She could hear a bit of tension in it. Maho could see the countdown timer displayed right next to Kurisu. There was less than 60 seconds left. The world we must reach is real. Okay, she's talking about Stein's Gate? I guess a world where, like, Kurisu could, could be back? <sighs> so Kurisu is aware of this, huh? Because,、like, right, time travel. She was researching time travel, so she's like, I can. So now Maho is probably going to help Okabe. Except the thing is, once, once we start all this over again, will Maho remember this? She doesn't have reading Steiner, does she? Her words were very vague, but Maho could sense that there was something very important that Kurisu wanted to tell her. Okay, that's Kurisu. Yeah, Kurisu wants Maho to get into the laptop because she's going to have her time travel information and research there. She knew what Kurisu was trying to say. She was trying to say. You will do something that surpasses what I could ever do. あなたは。クリスなの。今の先輩ともう一度話ができて。本当に嬉しいです。クリス。Without thinking, she tried to apologize. She didn't even know why, but she tried to apologize. In the last seconds of their final goodbye, she found herself trying to say that she was sorry.
That was all the strength Maho could muster, the best she could do. She had to say goodbye to her beloved and bratty friend. This is how she wanted it to be. It was a conversation that they had had many times back at the old lab. <laughs> the rush of memories was, in this time and place, sorrowful. Because, in fact, Kurisu had died a few months ago, a span of time that felt like both many years and only yesterday. There were less than ten seconds left. There was only time for one or two more words. Kiyoma, yo, what? Oh shit, okay. He shouldn't have. Wait a minute. Hold on. She shouldn't have that information, right? Because Amadeus. Oh, my mind has just been blown. Okay, when Maho said, like, are you, a are you actually, like, Kurisu? There's a name I haven't heard in quite a while. But yeah, she shouldn't have that information in this timeline because she should have never met Okabe. She did meet Okabe as Amadeus, but, like, Unless he mentioned that name specifically, she should not have that information. <laughs> and suddenly, Kurisu disappeared from the screen and was replaced by a message saying the deletion was completed. That was, uh, that is quite a big revelation there. Wow. Sayonara. <laughs> she was never going to see Kurisu or Kurisu. Ever again, when she realized that, the tears just wouldn't stop. They flowed freely, and she didn't even try to stop them. She cried like a little girl until the EMTs arrived. Ah, oh, so sad she's going back alone. I wonder if someone's gonna sit down next to her. It had been almost a month since everything had happened, but that month had passed in an instant. Too much had happened during her stay in Japan. It might take her far longer than she'd spent on these islands to process it all. I, uh... Yeah, what, whatever happened... Like, did she manage to get a hold of Okabe and everybody else and tell, tell them she was okay, at least? I mean, I'm sure, like, Moka, hopefully Moka, survived and she was able to let them know. The loss of Dr. Leskinen had thrown the Brain Science Institute into a panic. There was probably going to be a power struggle to see who'd get to take over. The scandal with Dr. Reyes had thrown the psych uh, psychophysiology lab into an uproar. There was talk of shutting down the whole department. Moka had missed her vitals, so Reyes had survived. Oh, okay, wait. So, okay, so Judy survived. The CIA or FBI was probably investigating right now. She didn't know much about it or care. Moka survived too, right? Right? Mocha had survived because of the EMTs that Carisu had called. She'd needed almost a month in the hospital, so she'd had to quit her job temporarily. The article that she'd been working on had been cancelled. Aww, poor Mocha. Maho's deletion program had worked perfectly, and as a result, the Brain Science Institute, Institute's greatest creation, Amadeus, was gone forever. でも、大丈夫。
That's what she told herself. She's probably like, now that she's got Carisu's laptop, she can get into it. She's like, I'm going to start a whole new thing. I'm going to continue on with Carisu's time travel research. Believe. The past month, Okabe told her everything. Okay, he told her everything about his own story. At first, it was unbelievable, but when she'd seen the real time machine and heard about Steins Gate, she was finally able to believe. More precisely, she wanted to believe. Kurisu's final words flashed through her mind. We will reach Steins Gate. That's what we're leading up to. That's why I'm playing all of these endings, because we're going to get Kurisu back. There was no way to know now what happened then. Amadeus's data was 100% deleted, so she couldn't even check the log. But she did have one theory. Amadeus was a simulation of the human brain. Theoretically, there were no differences between it and the real thing. As proof, it was possible to take memory data from one person and deploy it into an Amadeus, making it behave like a copy of that person. This meant anything that could happen to a human brain could happen to Amadeus. <laughs> Okay, that explains how Kurisu would... Did she... Here's the thing. Did she tell Okabe about Hoi and Kiyoma, please? Did she be like... Also, Kurisu mentioned this weird name, and then Okabe would be like, Oh, shit. Kurisu has these memories that she shouldn't have. There was no way to tell now. It was possible Amadeus had suffered from a major error before her deletion, and Maho was interpreting this way, interpreting it this way to make herself feel better. Or maybe Amadeus had just come up with something to say to make her feel better. Or maybe Maho had passed out and been dreaming. Now she'd never know. Amadeus was gone forever, at least from this world line. Ma, Carisu had asked her to believe, to believe in what she'd said and in Maho's own abilities. She'd asked her to believe. She gently laid a hand upon the small bag on her lap. There was a small laptop hard drive inside. It was the one from Carisu's laptop. Just like she'd said, the password for the encryption was the beginning of Mozart's 11th piano sonata. The hard drive was filled with information, from half-written papers to line after line of keywords that she hadn't even turned into ideas yet. Of course, there was the time machine paper, too. She'd already given Itaru a copy. Once she got back home, she was going to go over it thoroughly herself. There we go, that's probably it. The final thing is going to be Maho and, and Okabe working together to get to Steins Gate. The scenery outside the window began to move. The plane was moving down the runway for takeoff. Sayonara, Nippon. Tabun, mata kurukoto ni naru wa ne. Iie, zettai ni mata kuru. Sono toki ni wa, aeru no kashira ne. Hōin Kyōma san ni. Ma. Okay, so she must know, right? She must know that that's Okabe. She had a lot to do. Her life was about to get very interesting. 
切るの忘れてたちょっとだけ Ah, Kiryu, it's about time for takeoff. You have to turn your phone off during takeoff, but then you can't see this, can you? I should have sent it earlier. Ah, sorry. It wasn't for a very long time, but I had so much fun with you. Let's see each other again someday, for sure. I'll send you lots of Rhine messages, so send me lots back, okay? All right, later. Bye bye. See you again, Maho. Mata ne. Moika. All right, there we go. That is the second ending completed. I think I've got three more to do. Four. Okay, I feel dumb also. Um, <laughs> this whole time I was like, I thought this was Kagari's thing. And it was heading that way, but they, there was a decision that I made pretty sure that like so this was the maho like this is like the maho ending before we had the dr leskinen ending which was the bad ending this one definitely there's there's hope to it and it was actually very sweet it was a very sweet ending it it's bittersweet that she lost karisu but holy cow did we learn a lot of information so moika being the rounder still in this timeline uh that has been confirmed um the whole thing about uh, Amadeus actually not having control keys. Knowing Karisu's password. The big thing is that Karisu has, or at least Amadeus Karisu, having knowledge that she shouldn't have, that she got from another timeline that apparently her Amadeus self is still able to, to have, which is wild. Okay, guys, that was, yeah, that was a really good ending. That was a, that was a good um, route for sure. Definitely less depressing than the last one. Um, so this was the Maho ending. The next one that we're going to go for, that I believe is going to be the Kagari one. I got a little mixed up there. Um, I can't remember what it's called. The initials are RMG, I believe. Uh, so there is a decision that I need to make. I believe I have to answer the phone when Amadeus is calling after the attack on the lab. I think that is where it veers into the next route. So, of course, I will be doing that in the next episode because I feel dumb that I was commenting. I'd be like, I thought this was the Kagari route. Well, how is it that she just basically, like, she just went off somewhere with Luca and her father and we just never heard from them again? So maybe in this route coming up, we will actually see what happens there or maybe it's going to go differently so she doesn't end up going out to meet those people but i'm really excited to like see what that route is going to entail we're getting ever closer to the true ending um i imagine it probably won't take as long because before we had to start way back in december this one we can start from january so i imagine it won't take us as long to get to the end of that route but i'm excited to see it so hopefully you guys are too what'd you think of this route uh tell me your thoughts and hopefully you did enjoy and i will see you next time for the next route in this game until then bye special shout outs to my top tier patrons emily hornsby salieri zorn ether Amdere, revealing storm icognito Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gazip, Jared Fan, and Saturn Sins.